take care of that. Not exactly major, but no? correction. Yes. I've done this before. Yeah, I know you did it wonderfully last Good evening and welcome to the meeting of the Skokie Village Board for Monday, June the 18th, 2018. This evening we will be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by Cub Scout Pack 968. Gentlemen. Will the audience please rise? Color Guard, post the colors. Join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Two, Color Guard Retreat. Color Guard dismissed. Thank you. Great job. Uh, the he said you're welcome. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, the meeting will come to order, and the clerk will please call the roll. Trustee Roberts? Here. Trustee Sutker? Here. Trustee Ulrich? Here. Trustee Bramberg? Here. Trustee Klein? Here. Trustee Gray Keeler? Here. Mayor Van Dusen? Here. We have a quorum. Next item on the agenda is approval of the consent agenda. Motion is in order. Trustee Robert, seconded by Trustee Gray Keeler. Is there anything on the consent agenda anybody would like to have taken off? Uh, Trustee Klein has asked to be registered as being recused an item D under report of the village manager. Uh, call the roll, please. One more. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Andrew Siegel is not presenting the awards that right. Pam Yeah, that'll be taken care of. Okay. Uh, call the roll, please. Trustee Roberts? Aye. Trustee Sutker? Aye. Trustee Ulrich? Aye. Trustee Bromberg? Aye. Trustee Klein? Aye. Trustee Gray Keeler? Aye. Mayor Van Dusen? Aye. The motion passes. Uh, next item on the agenda is a proclamation celebrating B'nai Brith Day, the 175th anniversary. <clears throat> We're just a couple months early. Uh, it's October 13th, 2018. Uh, this evening we have with us uh, a familiar face in these parts, Shelley Marcus, who uh, I, in full disclosure, I have to say has been a family friend for at least 40 years. Uh, my, wife's, my wife would go back longer than that. They were neighbors in Morton Grove. Um, and uh, Shelley, I must tell you, Phyllis Kaplan told me to say hi. She told me just this afternoon when she saw the agenda and saw your name on it. She is also a family friend of Shelley's. Uh, uh, Jerry Markbright was going to be with us, uh, but this afternoon he called and he's under the weather, so uh, give Jerry our best. Many of you, I think, probably remember Jerry. He was an NFL um, linesman and uh, was the head linesman in a couple Super Bowls. And uh, like Shelley, uh, has many, many stories, political and NFL. Both are very ad 
adept after dinner speakers or before dinner speakers. Uh, but uh, what I would like to do is to read the proclamation and then turn it over to Shelley. Whereas 2018 marks the 175th anniversary of B'nai B'rith International. And whereas B'nai B'rith is the oldest service organization founded in the United States and has an unparalleled record of aiding humanity and communities throughout the United States and several dozen nations around the world. Whereas B'nai B'rith has provided over $100 million in cash, medical equipment and supplies to victims of disasters worldwide since 1865. And whereas B'nai B'rith is a strong and vocal advocate for the State of Israel and has an active presence in Israel since 1888, and whereas B'nai B'rith is the largest national Jewish sponsor of federally funded housing for seniors with limited income, provides safe, comfortable, and affordable housing for seniors without regard for race, religion, or ethnicity, and has an international network of senior living facilities. And whereas B'nai B'rith is widely acclaimed as a forceful advocate for senior citizens with a special emphasis on protecting Social Security and Medicare and in supporting access to quality health care and funding, for Aging Services Network and the minimum wage. And whereas B'nai B'rith has a long history of promoting cultural diversity, inclusion, and understanding via grassroots education projects, such as the Diverse Minds Writing Challenge, where high school students write and illustrate children's books to help teach them the values of inclusion and diversity, and whereas B'nai B'rith and local communities provide countless hours of service to local projects to better the communities in which they live. And whereas recognition is given to the past B'nai B'rith International President, Mr. Alan Jacobson, and present member of the B'nai B'rith International Executive Board, and to Mr. Brad Adolph the current president of the B'nai B'rith Sports Lodge. Whereas Jerry Markbright, a longtime resident of Skokie, is a past president of B'nai B'rith Sports Lodge, a local lodge who over the years has donated millions of dollars of college scholarships to graduating Jewish high school athletic students from public and private schools in the Chicago area many of which were Skokie residents. And whereas Shelley Marcus is a past Morton Grove Village trustee, past president of B'nai B'rith Midwest Region, and currently serves B'nai B'rith International as a senior vice president, now therefore I, George Van Dusen, mayor of the village of Skokie, do hereby proclaim October 13th, 2018, is B'nai B'rith Day. And I must say, uh, Shelley, the accomplishments of B'nai B'rith challenged us to get all of this on one page. So uh, if you would join me, I'd like to present this to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, trustees. Um, it's an honor to uh, be here this evening. And as uh, the mayor said, uh, I've known him and his family for well over 40 years. Uh, this is like almost a uh, family gathering. I've, I've met uh, some people in the audience who, who, who know my daughter. And I didn't realize that, Gene Speckman, uh, uh, who was here, Gina, who was here. Um, Skokie's been very, very close to my heart because I've lived in the area for almost 50 years living in Morton Grove, 
but I've been very active in the Niles Township, which obviously Skokie is part of. Uh, I'm very, very honored on behalf of B'nai B'rith to accept this proclamation. Um, B'nai B'rith has been around since 1843, and, and it is sort of strange that we're today, on, on uh, June 18th, uh, making it B'nai B'rith Day on October 13th. I just wanted to share with you the reason why we're doing this. October 13th is the day that B'nai B'rith was founded in 1843 on the Lower East Side of New York. And this year, during that period of time, we're going to be holding a giant uh, forum, leadership forum, and gala ball honoring B'nai B'rith. And we are, at this time, collecting proclamations such as this from various municipalities, uh, states, governors, messages, and they'll all be on display during that period of time uh, in New York, where we're going to have this uh, tremendous celebration. So I thank you very much. Mr. Mayor, colleagues, for this honor, giving this honor to B'day B'rith. Uh, 175 years is a long time, and they've been very, very involved. I'm very honored to be a volunteer senior vice president with them. Um, but I would like to also say to you that because it's the 175th year, uh, they have uh, made up a very special commemorative pin, silver pin, that I'm wearing uh, honoring B'day B'rith. And on behalf of B'day B'rith, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to present the pin to you. If you come forward, please. Just as a little small token of our appreciation. Thank you. And uh, I wish you well, and I wish everyone here well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Give our best to you. Well. Thank you. I will wear it proudly. Thank you. Thank you. And next, I would like to introduce Sam Corsione, Chair of the Skokie Telecommunications and Technology Commission, who will make a presentation for us. Sam? Thank you. Good evening, and thank you, Mayor, Board of Trustees, and ladies and gentlemen. The Skokie Telecommunications and Technology Commission is very excited to award the 2018 Science Fair Award to a dedicated Skokie student whose project exemplified scientific excellence as well as a project which could best help in the improvement of the community of Skokie. On March 10th, our fellow commissioners and I attended the IJAS Region 6 Science Fair at located, it was handled, had had been had at Niles North High School. Um, the commission reviewed a great many candidates at this event and chose Nelson Fernandez as the individual whose science project stood out to the commission. On behalf of the STAT Commission, it is my pleasure to introduce Nelson Fernandez. Nelson and Mayor Van Dusen, would you please come up? Sure. Uh, I want to give, I want to put everybody to a test. Uh, as Sam and I did the day, of the uh, project. Uh, Nelson's project is called Doped Surya as a thermochemical reaction medium for generating syngas. I'm not so sure I, I uh, pronounced everything correctly. I have absolutely no idea what this is about except it impressively utilizes engineered membrane and mechanisms that convert greenhouse gases into alternate energy sources. That sounds good. Yeah. You took the words right out of my I mouth. The Stat Commission and Board of Trustees are honored to award Nelson the 2018 Skokie Telecommunications and Technology Award. We're going to stop for a second. Congratulations. Thank you. 
Did you, did you have anything you wanted to say? <laughs> well, first of all, thank you, board, and everyone here. I know I'm really special, but mostly I want to thank District 219, the township, for giving the opportunity to and the resources to have the independent research course we have, as well as Ms. Postock and Ms. Gallagher, but most importantly, the um, mentor I had, who's from Southern Illinois University, um, Dr. Kanchi Mondal. Thank you. Thank you, Nelson, for your hard work and dedication uh, to the improvement of your community. In closing, I would like to acknowledge the hard work and dedication of the STAT Commission members. Uh, we, tonight we have Fran with us, and we have Randy Kling, and Jaime, I always do this, Jaime Gonzalez Vicker. Did I get it backwards? Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Please join me again in congratulating Nelson Fernandez in earning the 2018 Skokie Telecommunications and Technology Award. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, why don't we take just a short break and everybody can congratulate Nelson. Oh, I'm can, sorry. Can Nelson please describe his project a little bit for us? In layman's terms? Sure. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Would love to hear about it. <laughs> okay, so in my project, the main idea is taking um, oxygen from carbon dioxide, moving it off of the carbon atoms, so now we're creating oxygen, and it's a two-part reaction. So one reaction is with carbon dioxide, CO2, and then another reaction we're doing is with um, carbon methane, with methane, CH4. So the idea is that we have this membrane made up of different chemicals. So when you pass that carbon dioxide through it, it's taking that oxygen, depositing onto the membrane, so then you just have CO going through. So that. This, that's only half the reaction. The other half <laughs> is um, with the methane. So we take the methane, CH4, we pass it through the membrane. It takes the oxygen that was deposited on it onto the CH4. So then you have carbon monoxide going through as well as hy hydrogen alone. So then that liquid hydrogen is used for the fuel. Oh, is that all? <laughs> yeah. OK. Yeah. So, so Nelson, what? What, what practical application would you hope maybe someday that type of uh, uh, scientific process would allow for like the environment? How, how could it help? So there's two different ideas we have right now working on. One is here on Earth. We're um, thinking about like manufacturing plants, all that pollution coming out, use it for that, take out the carbon dioxide, the greenhouse gases out of the atmosphere, put in oxygen instead. Um, carbon monoxide will dis dispose of it, and then liquid hydrogen used as fuel. The other idea is with Martian biodomes. So on Mars, we can't live on it now because there's so much carbon dioxide and methane in the atmosphere. This way, creating biodomes, we use a membrane to take all that atmosphere, cycle it through, so then we have oxygen and hydrogen to use inside. Thank you. Thank you. Very impressive, Nelson. Very impressive. I just wish I understood it. <laughs> you can see why I was not a chemistry major. In it. Thank you. Uh, why don't we just take a very short break, but we can. Uh, I'm sure Nelson would like to stay for the emergency fence installation <laughs> contract, but somehow I suspect uh, otherwise. But. Oh, because we were doing it. I was doing it. Yeah, I would say a little different. I'd say I'd like uh, professional counsel to look into. Um, uh, yeah, you can say to abstain or, or you, to look into uh, 
what is permissible in terms of extending something. But it to, I'm calling it a buffer zone. I don't know what the term is. So it's, it's, it seems wrong. Yeah, buffer zone implies uh, uh, yeah. j just a no um, permitted distances between. What was? What did you accuse yourself? I do business with Midwest Foods. Oh, that's right. I even got an order today. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's uh, it's the permissible uh, distances between yeah. something like that. You'll be fine. I'll do it. Whatever you say. Yeah, I'll get. I'll trip over my tongue. Yeah. So we're going to try again. It's been a very interesting I mean, thing. What the heck's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> it's just like when you use my car. I got an ice tea. Yeah. Yeah. Jason, not yeah. the straw. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's not it's not it's not it's not it's not Uh, the meeting will return to order, and the next item is report of our village manager, John Lockerbie. Thank you, Mayor Van Dusen and Village Board. Good evening, everyone. Item A is regarding the Chicago's North Shore Convention and Visitors Agreement with Skokie. The Chicago North Shore Convention and Visitors Bureau consists of the municipalities of Skokie, Evanston, Glenview, Northbrook, Prospect Heights, Wheeling, and Winnetka. The Village of Skokie first joined the Bureau in 2002. The annual membership fee for the Village of Skokie is approximately $120,000 and is paid through the hotel tax collections. Included in the agenda packet is a resolution authorizing an agreement between the Village and the Visitors Bureau for a new three-year period. The board will note that Jason Wisha and Ann Tennis, who is at the podium, represent the village on the Bureau's executive committee and the board of directors. I view this as a wise investment as the membership leverages over $1.6 million annually to market members, including the entire community of Skokie, as well as hotels and businesses located in our community that choose to be a member. Currently, there are 55 Skokie businesses that are members. This evening, Gina Speckman, the Executive Director of the Bureau, will provide a presentation and answer any questions from the Board, after which I respectfully request the Mayor and Board adopt the resolution authorizing a three-year agreement between the Village and the Chicago North Shore Convention and Visitors Bureau. This evening, as John said, it is a three-year agreement. It is identical other than the dates to the three-year agreements that we have had with the Bureau since 2002. 
one uh, important aspect of the agreement is that Skokie has what we call a most favored nations clause, so that if there would ever be any terms that the Bureau would decide to extend to another member municipality that were more favorable than Skokie, Skokie would automatically receive those same terms. Um, the members of the Bureau, we've grown. The original membership, uh, three communities, were Skokie, Evanston, and Wilmette. Wilmette dropped out, but shortly thereafter, Northbrook, came on. So the current list of members include Skokie, Evanston, Glenview, Glencoe, Northbrook, Prospect Heights, Wheeling, and Winnetka. The uh, Bureau, the agreement defines an annual escalator of up to 3%. The Bureau dues were flat for about eight years. Last year they did go up by the full 3% that's allowable. This year they are once again flat. That is a decision every year by the Bureau's finance and executive committees, and it is approved by the Bureau Board. The um, seats that the Village of Skokie is, is allocated on the Bureau Board are held by a number of representatives of businesses in the community that are hospitality-related, including the Doubletree Hotel North Shore, the Holiday Inn North Shore, the North Shore Center for the Perform Performing Arts in Skokie, the Illinois Holocaust Museum and Education S Center, Westfield Old Orchard, and Hampton Inn and Suite. So we do have a good representation from the businesses in the community that are hospitality related. Because of the variables in state funding, and Gina may talk about this in a moment, we're very proud that the Bureau has a $372,000 reserve fund. We started with nothing in 2002, and we have really very strong constraints on the monies that can go into the reserve fund. We can't, put, we can't put state money into the reserve fund, and we need local monies to match the state funds. So the Bureau has been very good about finding money through user fees and other, when we had new communities join, such as Wheeling and Prospect Heights that joined just in the last four or five years, they were required to pay a 50% equity fee so they took, we took their annual dues, we cut it in half, they had to pay us that up front, and those monies went directly into the reserve fund. So should there be problems with the state, we do have money to rely on. Thankfully, we've never had to, to do that yet. As John said, the National Tour Tourism Industry Association has data that shows that for every $1 invested in tourism, there's a $9 return in spending in the local economy. So we do believe that this is, this is a good thing for Skokie. And I'm going to answer any questions, but in the meantime, I am glad to bring up Gina Speckman. Any questions for me at this point? Okay, I'll introduce Gina. Hi, um, thank you very much for allowing me to present. I feel like I was just here, but it's been three years. So again, I appreciate the opportunity. I'll try to go through this pretty quickly. Um, as Anne said, we are the official destination marketing um, organization that covers the North Shore as certified by the state of Illinois, um, Illinois Office of Tourism. And again, um, this is the area that we cover so you can see now that we have eight communities that are part of the Bureau. And we are very much a public-private partnership. Um, the, the state collects a 6% hotel tax. So out of that, it's, it's a statute that we get a certain percent of that collection, which is why we've been very fortunate during the years with no state budget that we still got our funding. We, our funds are not part of general revenue. They are a dedicated tax that by statute, a percent has to come back to the local convention and visitors bureaus. And then we have municipalities that are members and then we also have businesses that are in the hospitality industry that are members. We're a staff of six now, gonna be seven soon. Um, our offices, I don't have this in here, but our offices were downtown here for the past 10 years, and we just moved two months ago. We're still in Skokie. We're at Gross Point and Dempster. 
here are some metrics and we go over a lot of numbers. We have a third party company, Smith Travel Research, that provides statistics to all the hotels in the world and convention and visitors bureaus about occupancy rates, average daily rate, and revenue per available room. And we measure these. And you can see how 2017 was a little down from 2016. Um, our trends pretty much follow the city of Chicago's. The city of Chicago has added 8,000 rooms in 2017, and it affected them and us. Um, a quick year in review, and I'm not going to go into all of this, and it's in the document that I passed out. But again, we go to trade shows to meet with um, meeting planners and tour operators. We host people. We bring them here and show them all the amenities that we have in Skokie, for example, the hotels, the attractions anything that they can do, how they can get from the airport, everything to make a visit here, meeting, or group tour easy. Um, we also work with print publications, and we work with a lot of companies and third-party meeting planning companies to get on the map. Um, a lot of how business is done these days is through third-party organizations that uh, meeting planners have to use in order to book their business, and so we partner with all the key ones. And the list of them are in the pamphlet I passed out. Um, as Ann stated and John did, um, our budget year begins on July 1st. We have a $1.6 million budget. And we do all these different sales and marketing initiatives. Um, this is just a sample of some of the trade shows that we go to. So it's there's never six of us in the office at the same time. Let me just say that. Um, we are mostly in the Midwest, but we do do some other shows that are national in scope. And you know, we have a very sweet spot in terms of the size of meetings and events we can host here. As you know, we don't have a convention center, but we do have um, a lot of demand for meetings that are between 50 and 300 people attendance. And we really have a targeted um, approach to how we go after business. And meeting clients one-on-one -on -one at trade shows is a key tool for us. We have a new brand identity, so we don't have the waves in our logo anymore. But um, we went through a whole brand review with a company called Graham Spencer that talked to all our stakeholders. And there's a lot behind our new brand. I'm not going to get into it now, but if you have any questions about it, I'd love to talk about it. Um, here are some of our, our printed publications, our annual visitor's guide. We do a mapping guide. We do advertising. This is just a sample of a meeting ad. We do some international advertising. Um, these are some of the placements that we're in. And a lot of it, obviously, is digital and online these days. Um, and this is just some examples of advertising we do. And we try to um, highlight things that are new and interesting. You could see like when the Take a Stand Center at the Illinois Holocaust Museum has been a very popular new addition to what we have to offer people. Um, we had our 10th anniversary of our restaurant month. We have over 100 restaurants that participate. And this is a very popular program for our restaurants. We bring in additional 5,000 covers to restaurants in February, which is a kind of slow month for restaurants. In April, we inaugurated a new event called Museum Month because of the success of Restaurant Month. And so it was a great time with spring break to um, allow people to visit all the museums on the North Shore. And people offered two for one admissions and gifts upon entry. So we inaugurated it this year, and it will be doing it now in every April. Um, we have a newsletter that goes to 11,500 people that have signed up for it on the North Shore. So it allows, it's a great vehicle to allow cross promotion on the North Shore communities. When we talk to a lot of our members, yes, they want somebody from New York or LA to come to their restaurant, but they'd be really happy just to get someone from Northbrook to come to Skokie. So recognizing that um, this is a great vehicle that allows kind of our communities on the North Shore to market to each other. Our website um, has over 30,000 unique visitors a month. We're going to be redesigning our website and our visitor's guide to utilize our new brand identity and just in general update it. We have hundreds of blog topics that we use that content for a number of different things. And I'm sure you see articles where it says 10 best this or the best hamburger or the best pizza. 
we use that content marketing to drive advertising campaigns to our website. And so content marketing and advertising is big for us now. We have hundreds of different blog topics that we repurpose and use, and um, it's a, a lot of the center now of a lot of the marketing we do. We have a new application called Visit Widget, and it takes all the information in our database, <coughs> it events, all the members, and it allows you to map things. Because when people are from out of town, they don't know where the Botanic Garden is in relation to the Holocaust Museum. So it allows people to plan smartly and see where things are that they want to do. So all of our events are in there and all of our members. Um, and here's just some metrics for our face, you know, for our social media, Facebook likes, we have almost 40,000 people. We do lots of <laughs> um, Facebook advertising. Um, which is now integrated into Instagram. So um, this is really key to us. We do um, a lot of promotion through that, and it allows a lot of small businesses a big audience to get out to, because a lot of our members might have two or 300 people that follow them, <coughs> but our members know that if they send us content, it's out within 24 hours, and it's going to our big audience. Um, this is a sample of some <coughs> Facebook ads that we've done for various just an example of what I was talking about. Um, we do FAM trips. Um, we did over 50 this year, FAM trips and site inspections, where we bring meeting planners in and tour them till they're very tired. So um, this is just an example of a FAM group that we had in for, of meeting planners in the winter. Um, we have monthly networking events, and we're having one on <coughs> Thursday at Fast Signs in Skokie, so you're all welcome to come. We had our holiday party at the Hampton Inn this past December in Skokie. Um, public relations, we do a lot of public relations, a lot of, we get a lot of requests for photos and articles, um, so a lot of it is fulfilling that and working with the state's PR agency in getting that information out. So this is something that um, is very important in our mix. Public relations is a part of the mix of what we do. And I think that's it. But um, we also do, one thing I don't have in here is that we do photography and video shoots um, every summer. And we have great photography of Skokie. And it's in that brochure that you can see some of the photos. So. Um, that's, you know, a lot of what we do in marketing right now is very image driven. That's just the way things are in the world of marketing now. So we um, are, have a professional photographer and we work with each of our communities to have fresh photography. We did a great shoot last year, amazing photos of the Backlot Bash. And, you know, we allow all our members and the communities to use the photography that we own that we shoot. And um, we share it with the state of Illinois also for their promotions. So that's just a really, really quick overview. And if there's any questions, I love questions. Yes. The trustee Zucker. I know that the new branding you said you could talk about it, but you didn't want to. But I'm just curious, was there, um, did, did some consulting firm tell you you needed to rebrand? Or what was the thinking behind the whole new branding? Well, you know, the logo was at the end of the whole enterprise. And if you see, and right now we're still incorporating the new logo. It's only been a couple months old. So some of the old, like our website still has the old logo with the waves. And one of the things, so the company that specializes in branding was really trying to find out why people come here, why they don't, what is people's opinions about our area that come here, and people that don't. So um, what came out that was really a big surprise for us um, in terms of the logo and part of the branding exercise was that we were so much like every, everything we did had a picture of the lake in it. And you know we had waves of the shore in our logo. And what came out in talking to clients, stakeholders, everyone, was the lake was an unfulfilled promise that um, most people that came here never went to the lake. Right. And I was crying, because when we started the whole exercise, I said, I don't care what you do as long as you don't touch my waves. Uh. And um, you know, it really, if, if you really think about it, I mean, yes, you can say in Skokie that they don't, but even p meeting planners and people that are at Evanston Hotels, which are blocks away from the lake, never engage with the lake. 
So they said, you have a lot to offer, and the lake is really great as an identifier to identify your area as bordering the city, near the lake, but the lake as an experience is an unfulfilled promise that, you'll, that people never experience. So that really made sense to us. And, so the, and then also the tagline, City Life Elevated, we mainly compete with the 15 other Convention and Visitors Bureaus in the Chicagoland area. So what's different than us than Elgin or Aurora? You know, the fact is that we're pretty urban and metropolitan compared to some of the other areas. So we're city life, but elevated. So you can take elevated to mean north, because we're north, but you can mean no crime, no, no traffic, that it's nicer, elevated. So mm -hmm. there was a lot of thought behind that, and you know, we kind of embraced that. And it was just time to have you know, an updated look. But the, look came, the logo came as part of the whole brand re exercise of who we are and what we That's want. Okay. Thank you. Trustee Roberts. Could you just, uh, to make it a little bit more real, what, what would be an example of some of the groups that have come in and used, that you've worked with, and then how does it play out? And I know everyone's different, but, you know, <laughs> they come in for a meeting and then they go to a museum, they go to a restaurant. How does that kind of play out, or could you give a, a scenario? <laughs> or? Um, well, the meetings are really different than the group tours we do and the leisure travel. Most of the meeting planners, they just want to know rates um, for their hotel rooms, for their meeting space, transportation options, and if they're going to be able to execute their meeting very efficiently, and uh, can people get there easily, how much is parking, et cetera. Um, the, act the activities that the meeting people do while they're here is not is great of importance. I mean, the thing that Skokie really has that benefits meeting planners is, like, especially if you're on the, um, if you're at the Double Tree, to have a performing arts center and a big, beautiful shopping center across the street. Like, no one else has that in the metro area. So, we, you know, that is very appealing to people. Um, and. Over, so overall, how it works is um, we solicit and we meet with planners that could potentially meet with us. We know that they're considering the Chicago area. They might have met in the city. They might have met in Rosemont. They're like, wait, North Shore, what are you? Who are you? And we explain to them what we have, and then they give us the specs for their meeting, and we send what's called a lead to all the hotels. And basically, based on pricing and availability, they win the bid or they don't. It's very, you know, um, cut and dry for the meeting part. For the group tour side of our business, where we bring groups here, we bring lots of groups to the Holocaust Museum, Old Orchard, the restaurants, that's very much amenity-based, and we do have fam trips where we bring tour operators and show them, and when, uh, it can be park districts, bank affinity groups, and what's great about that, those are repeat customers. You know, they can bring three or four groups here a quarter, you know, once a meeting plan, or once a group tour operator meets with our, Karen Shulman's our group tour person, and they like her, she takes care of their groups, coming here is easy, they love the product, they love the experience, they tell all their other planner friends, and so that just builds upon itself. So that's really where the amenities, but that, it's all, a lot of it's relationship oriented, and we're very lucky that Kimberly, who does the meetings, has been with us 15 years, and um, Karen's been with us over 10 years, and people really like working with people that they know and trust and will take care of their meeting or group. A, mo <coughs> a motion as recommended by the village manager and tennis authorizing a three-year agreement between the village of Skokie and the Chicago North Shore Convention and Visitors Bureau would be in order. Trustee Bromberg, seconded by Trustee Klein. Are there any other comments or questions? If not, uh, call the roll, please. Trustee Roberts? Aye. Trustee Sutker? Aye. Trustee Ulrich? Aye. Trustee Bromberg? Aye. Trustee Klein? Aye. Trustee Gray Keeler? Aye. Mayor Windus? And Aye. The motion passes. Next is the 2018 Citizen Survey. The Village of Skokie has conducted a citizen survey on a triennial basis since 2003. 
The National Research Center, commonly known as NRC, has conducted the written surveys from which the village has gained valuable information on resident satisfaction with village programs and services. A new survey is due this year. The village received two proposals, one from NRC and another one from the ETC Institute. After evaluating the two proposals, NRC was chosen to conduct the 2018 citizen survey, which will occur in early fall of this year. I concur with staff's recommendation to enter into a contract with NRC for an amount not to exceed $21,280, and Tennis manages this initiative for us. Mayor and board approval of the resolution authorizing this contract is respectfully requested. Thank you. A motion is in order, Trustee Robert, seconded by Trustee Ulrich. Are there any comments or questions? Trustee Roberts. And is this the first time that uh, I notice in the memo that it allows a citizen to opt in? Yes. So in other words, they'll send out the 1,200 surveys, but if there's someone who's really dying to uh, give input, there's a way for anybody, any resident. Yes, it's, it's, um, it's a very exciting new chapter for us in surveying the citizens of Skokie. And um, there will actually, I, I learned, uh, after writing this memo, I learned there will be 1,600 randomly selected homes. So it's up from the 1,200 that was in your memo. It's 1,600. And there are actually two online options. The first online option is a specially coded link that will be sent in the survey to the 1,600 randomly selected homes, and those are both single family and multifamily homes. And residents, if they get the survey and they look at it, they can decide, you know, I don't want to fill this out, I'm going to go online and do it. The other link is a separate code, and that we will put on the home page of the website. We, uh, if time permits, we will put it in the village newsletter. We will certainly issue it in an edition of the Skokie electronic newsletter that goes to 15,000 plus individuals. And people can then, as you said, Trustee Roberts, opt in. What I learned from the National Research Center principals last week is that they will make a decision once they see the differences, if there are any, in the online data. If the online data from the residents who voluntarily opt in is similar to the scientifically collected data, they will combine them. If they are very different in terms of demographics, and what they're told, they will leave them separate. We will still get a report for that data, but it will not be combined with the scientifically collected data. So yeah, I'm very excited about that, to be able to give the entire community the opportunity to opt in. Trustee Sutker. So uh, I read that it says in late July, it'll go to the 12, or no, I guess you the said 1600. 1600, yes. Mm -hmm. but I'm assuming there's going to be a limited time frame for the yeah. for both of those on the website, right? It's usually about two to three weeks oh. is what the time okay. period is. We're expecting the first cut of data to be able to present to the village board in early October, and they need a good month to do the analysis. So if it goes to homes in late July, I would estimate that probably right before the backlot bash is when we'll, we'll cut it off. But we'll, d we'll determine that together with the National Research Center. Because I, I would guess that that's part of the process is having a limited amount of time. Yeah, it is. Can... Yes, you do. It okay. is a finite, finite okay. response period. Thank yes. you. Mm -hmm. A question also. Sure. I'm, I'm not a survey person, but I'm assuming they have this all worked out by it's anonymous, but it can't be totally anonymous because I can fill it out a thousand times then. So I'm sure they have something. They have. In their they work must out. have. And I, that's a great question, and I wish I was able to give you an answer um, in in more specifics to that. I am hopeful, and I would my expectation, knowing how the National Research Center operates, is that when people opt in, there is a way to make sure that there's no duplication. What that is, I can't tell you right now, but I will find out, and I will report back through the village manager. <coughs> Trustee Klein. Uh, yeah, on the last survey, we all found it very informative. So the question I want to ask is, are there any new avenues that this survey is going to go into? 
things that, that we haven't touched before. That is yet to be determined. One of the, part of the process, and we talked about uh, staff uh, at the village manager's marketing meeting this morning. We, we started our discussions about the survey instrument, which of course will come to the village board before it's finalized. But we talked about what our custom questions are going to be. You know, we'll, we'll change those around. We will probably tomorrow, I'll be sending the 2015 survey draft out to all of the department and division directors, asking them to take a look at it, to take a look at the questions that were asked about their areas of responsibility, to see if there's any way that they would like to modify or amend those questions. So to be seen. <laughs> but yes, I would expect that there will be certainly in the custom questions, there will be, they will not, I will venture to guess that they will not be the same as they were in 2015. So yes, there will be changes. And if there are things, you know, certainly I, I can um, say that we are interested what, if there are specific questions that are important to the board, I know those would be entertained by the village manager. Thank you. Uh, call the roll, please. Trustee Roberts. Aye. Trustee Sutker. Aye. Trustee Ulrich. Aye. Trustee Bromberg. Aye. Trustee Klein. Aye. Trustee Greg Keeler. Aye. Mayor Windus. Aye. Aye. The motion passes. Item C and D was approved under tonight's consent agenda. Item E is a request for executive session. Pursuant to Section 2, Paragraph C5 and C6 of the State of Illinois Open Meetings Act, a closed session is requested and to adjourn therefrom. A motion for executive session per the manager's request is in order. Trustee Klein seconded by Trustee Bromberg. Call the roll, please. Trustee Roberts. Aye. Trustee Sutker. Aye. Trustee Ulrich? Aye. Trustee Bromberg? Aye. Trustee Klein? Aye. Trustee Greg Keeler? Aye. Mayor Windus? Aye. The motion passes. And that concludes, excuse me, that concludes my report this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Report of our Corporation Council, Michael Lorge is next. Thank you, Mayor, Trustees. Good evening, everyone. Items A, B, C, D, E, and F were ordinances on the consent agenda at the beginning of this evening and were adopted. Item G is an ordinance on the agenda for first reading tonight. This is a standard and routine ordinance that concerns the establishment of the prevailing wage for public works construction projects in the village pursuant to the prevailing wage act as cited in the notes. The Illinois Department of Labor requires that all public bodies ascertain the prevailing wage as defined by this act. The adoption of the ordinance would only apply to projects for which the village solicits competitive bids. There's a memorandum that was prepared by Mike Alexic, Assistant Finance Director, dated June 6, 2018, and we can entertain any questions that are not uh, set forth in that memorandum. The ordinance otherwise will be back on the agenda for board action on July 2, 2018 for second reading and adoption at that time. Item H is an ordinance on agenda for the first reading tonight as well. This ordinance will approve the disposition of village-owned property located at 8122 and 8142 Lincoln Avenue. This property is located in the Downtown Science and Technology TIF District, and both parcels were purchased with TIF funds. The property will be utilized for a mixed-use housing and commercial development in keeping with the goals of the TIF district. This ordinance will also be back on the agenda for board action on July 2nd, 2018, uh, at that time for second reading and adoption. Finally, Mayor, I have a request for executive session. This will be a request in accordance with paragraph 2C11 of the Illinois Open Meetings Act pertaining to the review and discussion of pending litigation. A motion on executive session per the request of our Corporation Council is in order. Trustee Sucker, seconded by Trustee Ulrich. Call the roll, please. Trustee Roberts. Aye. Trustee Sutker. Aye. Trustee Ulrich. Aye. Trustee Bromberg. Aye. Trustee Klein. Aye. Trustee Greg Keeler. Aye. Mayor Windus. Aye. The motion passes. Thank you, Mayor. That would conclude my report for this evening. Thank you.
Uh, the concluding uh, report this evening are the recommendations from our plan commission, Chairman Paul Luke with Peter Pyer. Uh, good evening, Mayor, members of the board. Uh, tonight, I have four related cases, and to follow these cases have been approved at the May 22nd Plan Commission meeting. The cases involved the proposed road material recycling facility at 3219 Oakton Street and 3240 Howard Street. The proposed request will amend existing site plan approval and special use ordinances. In Planning Commission case 2018-11P, which is the zoning chapter amendment, is a request to amend zoning chapter uh, code <coughs> of the village code to add definition for road material re recycling to section 118-32 to amend this, the appendix A use table to make road material recycling a special use in the M3 industrial zoning district. This, requ this was to require that off-street parking to be, determined, to be determined by the Planning Commission in section 118-218-4 and any necessary changes to the zoning re chapter related to this case. In Planning Commission case 2018-12P, the site plan approval was a request for site plan approval modifications to an existing site plan approval to include a road material recycling facility in conjunction with existing legal non-conforming quarrying and stone cutting established in, in an M3 zo uh, industry zoning district and any relief that may be discovered during the review of this case. In 2015, the petitioners were granted site plan approval to upgrade the facility that was approximately 50 years old and had reached the end of its useful life. The, the border of the site is being expanded to go under the south, go under and to the south of the CTA tracks to a property at 3240 Howard Street. The road material recycling facility will be located north of the CTA tracks and material to be recycled will be stored in an area south of the site. Fisher will also be removing four parking spaces and adding four parking spaces to the north of the motor control center and three spaces to the south of the main control building in order to place the parking closer to where the staff actually works. There are no other, no other planned modifications to the site as the equipment and buildings will remain unchanged. In case 2018-13P, the parking determination the request was heard by the Planning Commission to, to determine the parking requirement for a road material recycling, recycling facility. The, the Planning Commission is a final hearing body for such cases and it was determined that no additional parking was, was required. In Planning Commission case 2018-14P, this is the special use permit for 3219 Oakton Street. The request is for a special use permit for road material recycling at 3219 Oakton and any relief that may be discovered. According to petitioner, the road material recycling facility has operated at the subject site for at least 30 years. However, the facility was not included in the 2014 site plan approval request. In Planning Commission case 2018-15P, this is the special use at 3219 Oakton and 3240 Howard. This is a request for a special use permit to expand outdoor storage at the asphalt plant. The existing special use permit for outdoor storage in case 2014-36P, which was requested in advance of the 2015 replacement of the asphalt production equipment, allows for the outdoor storage of liquid asphalt storage tanks, as well as road construction material, gravel and sand piles that are located at the 3219 Oakton Street portion of the subject site. These materials are processed by the asphalt production machinery at the site and then delivered to construction projects in the area. Additional space for outdoor storage of materials is now needed due to the equipment of the, due to the <coughs> expansion of the use of the south to the south of the CTA yellow line tracks onto 3040 Howard Street property. Plaque Commission occurred with staff recommendation to approve each of the cases. Um, I believe Tim Winter 
is with us this evening. Mr. Winner, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Winner is the uh, petitioner. <clears throat> I thought what we might do is if anybody has any comments or questions, we could take those. Uh, and then after the comments and questions, then we would proceed uh, <clears throat> from A to B to C to D on the plan commissions and take uh, the vote. So are there any overall comments or questions? Trustee Sucker. <clears throat> um, it states that according to the petitioner, the road material recycling facility has operated the, at the site for 30 years. However, the facility was not included in the 2014 site plan approval request. So I'm just curious as to why it wasn't part of the 2014. I think Peter can add this to that. <laughs> well, <laughs> the chairman is adept. <laughs> well, actually, I don't think anybody knew it was out there. Um, there was some temporary road uh, recycling work going on on the south side, and there was a lot of road construction in the area, so we allowed that to happen. Mm -hmm. But then we saw the permits coming through from IEPA that uh, requires that to you know be approved. And we saw that there was not a permanent facility shown on the site. And so that's why it's now going through the full public hearing process. But even the tanks and everything, they were there for many, many years. And it was only because they were putting in new equipment that we had them go through the public hearing process. There's, there were complicating factors as to the own ownership of some of the land, too. There is an MWRD part of this property and an overlay from the CTA. So were there certain things that even though the owners sought to do it, it took a tremendous amount of time to get the uh, understandings and authority that was proper from MWRD. As we've seen in other uh, cases and matters, they're somewhat reluctant to uh, um, facilitate some of these um, efforts. Uh, but that was uh, done. The, uh, the petitioner really pursued it at length. And uh, there was occasion for uh, the mayor and uh, village manager and I to go out and actually see the site. And I don't know if I should be uh, inviting people to your home, but uh, this is really such a clean and um, upgraded facility now. It's, it's worth everyone going to see it. It's, uh, it's important in terms of construction, road construction in the area, but it's uh, a standout facility. Thank you. Tr Trustee Roberts. <coughs> uh, Mr. Winter, I just want to ask about uh, the use of uh, recycled. Uh, I don't know anything about your business, but this seems to be a, a really win-win for the environment, less truck traffic. And uh, so you're actually using recycled material that gets scraped off the roads. Your plant is able to turn that into new hot mix. Yes. Could you just explain yeah, it? Yes, we recycle both asphalt and concrete at our facility. All the IDOT requirements for new asphalt mix requires a certain amount of recycled asphalt in their mix design already. So we have to do it just to meet IDOT standards. So that's used. Uh, the recycled concrete is used as the road base. So when you see all the stone going down, instead of taking out from all the quarries in the area and hauling it in, we use it right here, re back, reuse it in the facilities. Um, builders asphalt we just redid some uh, road projects some curbs in or we're doing it this year all the curbs were taken out we're putting back as road base back in the facility into your own roads and then how, how, the new piece of the property that's south of the tracks is can you get in from the interior or do you have to go down to Howard Street to how do you get to the south we, part of the parcel there we have the right to go down to Howard Street but we don't want to use that that's a very dangerous okay. little driveway there yeah we, I actually just have the final license agreement from CTA to cross underneath their tracks, which we did previously until property ownership issues happened. Yeah. So we've been doing it, and it's just now we just got everything finalized, and there's no worries about us. It's fenced off. They're 30 feet higher. Trucks are only 12, even if they're all the way up, yeah. which they shouldn't be. We can't hit anything. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Uh, the first vote will be on... Plan Commission Case 2018-11P, Chapter Amendment, Road Materials Recycling. Motion is in order. Trustee Gray Keeler, seconded by Trustee Bromberg. Call the roll, please. 
Trustee Roberts. Aye. Trustee Sutker. Aye. Trustee Ulrich. Aye. Trustee Bromberg. Aye. Trustee Klein. Aye. Trustee Gray Keeler. Aye. Mayor Van Dusen. Aye. The motion passes. Next is Plan Commission Case 2018-12P, Site Plan Approval, 3219 Oakton and 3240 Howard Street. Motion is in order. Trustee Roberts, seconded by Trustee Sutker. Uh, call the roll. Trustee Roberts. Aye. Trustee Sutker. Aye. Trustee Ulrich. Aye. Trustee Bromberg. Aye. Trustee Klein. Aye. Trustee Gray Keeler. Aye. Mayor Windus. Aye. Motion passes. Plan Commission Case 2018 14P, Special Use Permit 3219 Oakton Street. Trustee Gray Keeler, seconded by Trustee Bromberg. Call the roll, please. Trustee Roberts. Aye. Trustee Sutker. Aye. Trustee Ulrich. Aye. Trustee Bromberg. Aye. Trustee Klein. Aye. Trustee Gray Keeler. Aye. Mayor Van Dusen. Aye. The motion passes. And concluding this section, Plan Commission Case 2018 15P. Special Use Permit, 3219 Oakton and 3240 Howard Street. Motion is in order. Trustee Roberts, seconded by Trustee Ulrich. Call the roll, please. Trustee Roberts. Aye. Trustee Sutker. Aye. Trustee Ulrich. Yes, aye. Trustee Bromberg. Aye. Trustee Klein. Aye. Trustee Gray Keeler. Aye. Mayor Windus. Aye. aye. The motion passes. Congratulations, Mr. Winner. Great to have you. Keep up the good work. The concluding plan commission case, Mr. Chairman. Yes, this case is case number 2018-16P, site plan approval at 9504 Lowell Avenue. At the May 17th meeting of the plan commission, we heard a request for a site plan approval for a congregate living facility with six bedrooms at 9504 Lowell Avenue in an R1 single family zoning district. For the past nine years, the LeBenu Foundation, a non for profit organization, has partnered with Clearbook, who has been operating a community in integrated living arrangement home for the development, developmentally challenged for about 60 years. They wish to operate a home for six women with, with developmental issues such as autism and Down syndrome. Clearbrook provides services in 50 homes in McHenry, Lake Bluff, Rogers Park, and close to the lake. The LeBenu Foundation owns three homes nearby in, in Chicago. They work hard not to be in this, as an institution, but rather a family home. Clearbrook will manage the home services and staff, while LeBenu will oversee the Jewish life and community and family values. The women have been living together like a family in a rental property about a block <coughs> and a half away. The landlord there wishes to sell that property on trip, and LeBenu has purchased this property, which has six bedrooms for the women to move into. Staffing is done by shifts. The residents, <coughs> go, to, they, <coughs> the residents go to daycare, day, day programs, or work from nine to three. There is no one at the home while, while everyone is away. When the women come home, there's always some supervision. If a resident is sick and stays home, arrangements will be made for, to have someone stay with them. There's one van for transporting the women and the staff car. And there is a two and a half car garage as well as, a, as one parking, uh, parking pad in the rear. The plan commission concurred with staff to grant the site plan approval. And Peter, if I, remember correctly, this basically is a is an exchange. Libano for maybe five years or longer has had a house on trip. I think that he yes. ninety four hundred block, I think it is. Yeah. That one is now being sold by the owner and this would be their new home. Am I correct? That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Very well run home and uh, never had any complaints about it. As a matter of fact, I live uh, just a block north and I, I didn't have any plans of getting involved in this, but 
I'm going to say it. Uh, I think in many respects they saved that block. Uh, during the recession, there were at least two homes that were in foreclosure. Another one was very close to it. It was, my understanding, it was underwater. And when the Libano came in, they did all new landscaping, uh, did some great work on the frontage of the house. And because of that, uh, the other two homes sold and were rebuilt. And the other one, the one that was underwater, also sold. And in each one of those cases, um, the homes were made much more attractive. Uh, very, and the uh, uh, people, the residents there, were just wonderful neighbors. Uh, so, uh, excuse me, Mayor Van Duzer, we do have a representative from Clearbrook in the audience here. Oh, great. Do you I, have any questions for him? Welcome. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, let me get a motion, and then we'll call for questions and answers. So a motion, uh, 9405 site plan approval, Plan Commission case 2018-16P is in order. Trustee Sutker, seconded by Trustee Bromberg. Comments, questions. Is there anybody who has any questions or any comments? Yes, well. Trustee Klein. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, the home you're giving up, I take it that you did not, you do not have ownership of that. That's correct. It was a rental property. And what about this new one on Lowell? This will be owned by the Libanu Foundation. Okay, so you are taking possession of correct. it. Correct. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, call the roll, please. Trustee Roberts? Aye. Trustee Sutker? Aye. Trustee Eldridge? Aye. Trustee Bromberg? Aye. Trustee Klein? Aye. Trustee Gray Keeler? Aye. Mayor Winters? Aye. The motion passes. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the final item before we adjourn for executive session is citizen comments. Is there anybody who wishes to address the village board? If not. Um, Mayor, oh. should we just verify if the gentleman. No. Okay. No. Yeah, he's on the tech command. I know. I okay. know. Okay. We are adjourned. Uh, Trustee Roberts. <laughs> I, I did further. Uh, Trustee Bromberg. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you.